All right, so in this webinar, we will walk you through how to use recent changes, as well as page history logs and tour special pages. We'll explain in detail all aspects of these pages and offer advice on best practices for using them to help manage your wiki. Let's start by reviewing some of the basics of what makes up a wiki. When you create a wiki, it comes with a number of default namespaces. Namespaces are sections of a wiki which help to divide up and group together similar page types. An example of this are user pages. All user pages are grouped together into the user namespace. Each page belongs to exactly one namespace. By having different namespaces, the pages within it can be searched and list separately from each other. Another basic concept within a wiki is that all changes are tracked. Any edit, big or small, as long as it's published, is recorded. That means that all, you will see all the additions and deletions to a page th throughout the entire life of that page. This is done for all pages and it doesn't matter what type. This is super helpful in seeing what has been added and removed to a page. For content that might not be an actual page, but is rather an action, these are also recorded in what we call logs. Later we will walk you through how to use and follow logs, but for now it's important to know that all actions on a wiki, from changing page names to user rights adjustments, are also recorded. Lastly, a series of pages called special pages exists, which gives you access to a number of statistics, tools, popular content, and much more. Special pages provide a place where you can find, along with the admin dashboard, important tools and links. So let's start by talking about page history. As I mentioned, every addition or deletion to a page is recorded. To see the history of a page, click on the Edit button drop-down and click on the History link. Once on the History page, there are a couple of important areas to note. The top section lists the name of the page you are viewing with a link back to the page itself and a link to any logs associated with that page. Below that is the Browse History box. Here you can define what date range you would like to see the history of. If you're interested in a certain time period, this is a place to adjust it. If your wiki uses special tags, you can also search for them in this area. Below the Browse History box is the main section of the page, the history of all edits. The newest changes are listed at the top. Let's break down what each item on each line there provides. The first item shows parentheses and the text cur and prev. These stand for current and previous. If you click on cur, it will take you to what is called a diff page, a page showing the difference between that specific edit and another version of a page. Here you can see a picture of a diff page. In this case, the diff page is comparing the selected version and the current version. The content that has changed is highlighted in green on the newer edit on the right, and in yellow in the older version on the left. If the text is shown as red, this means it was specifically adjusted. In the screenshot here, you can see the word file was added. From the history page, the link prev also would take you to a diff page showing the changes between that edit and the previous version. The most recent version appears below the changes, so you can see how the page was rendered. Both cur and prev allow you to compare side-by-side side one version of the page to another. If you would like to see what the next edit was, simply click on the newer edit link at the top, and you will be brought to the next diff page. You can also do the same to see the previous edit by clicking on the older edit link. Back on the history page, the two columns of radio buttons can be used to select any two versions of the page. By selecting two different edits, then clicking the Compare Selected Versions button, you will be taken to a diff page showing the changes between these two specific versions. Next on the line, you will see the time and date stamps. This gives you the time and date of the edit expressed in local time according to your preferences. The date and time link to the version of the page on that given day and time. This is then followed by the username or IP of the person who made the edit. You are provided with links to their talk page or message wall and their contributions. After that is how many bytes of content they added. If you see the letter M on the line, this denotes that it was marked as a minor edit. If you see the letter B, this means the edit was made by a bot. Last, unless you're an admin, is the edit summary. 
This is the text a user wrote into the edit summary box next to the edit box when they saved their edit. This is meant to inform you of what kind of change they made. If you're an admin, you also have a link here to undo any edit. This will remove the edit that was added. If a series of edits were made by the same person, you can in fact roll back or undo multiple edits at once. This can be helpful if there has been vandalism on the page. Now that you're familiar with page histories, let's move on to recent changes. Trello will walk us through recent changes and logs. Hi everyone. Recent changes can be found by visiting special recent changes. And it looks similar and acts similar to a history page. But it's a history of all edits across the entire wiki. When you first visit recent changes, you will see a couple of quick links in the top that let you quickly filter to see all pages, new pages, new files, or logs. Below that is a box called Recent Changes Options. This allows you to adjust how much of you see in recent changes. You can decide how many edits you want to see on the page from how many of the last given number of days. Numbers that are bold are the ones you've chosen in your preferences. The default is to show 50 edits for the last 7 days. You can adjust these to show more or less. Below that is an additional number of options for what types of edits you want to see. You have the ability to hide or show minor edits, edits from bots, anons or users, as well as patrolled edits, your edits, grouped recent changes, and logs. Below that, you have the option to show all namespaces or just one in particular. As on the history page, you can filter by tags. Now let's discuss the meat of recent changes, all the good stuff. Let's go over what you want to see here, much of what is similar to what you see on history pages. At the beginning, you may see some letters and symbols listed before the page title. The ones you may see include a capital M, which implies that there is a new page or comment. Lowercase m means that the editor has ticked the box uh, minor edit. Lowercase b is an edit made by a bot. An exclamation point is an unpatrolled edit, which you will only see if your wiki has recent changes patrol enabled. And if you see an arrow, that means there are multiple edits to the same page. You can condense or expand this to your liking. After this, first you'll see a timestamp, which is listed in 24-hour intervals of the edit. You can, adjust to, you can adjust how this is displayed to your local time and your preferences. This is followed by the name of the page that was edited. Next, you will see a diff link which, if you click, will take you to the diff for that edit on the page. Next is the hist link, which will take you to the full history of the page. After that is the page name where the edit has taken place. The links to the current version of the page. If it's bold, that means you follow the page. Next you'll see positive numbers in green, or negative numbers in red, enclosed in parenthesis. They're the amount of characters and bytes that were added or removed in that specific edit. If you see a zero in gray, it means that the edit has been made, but nothing has been added or removed, such as a spelling error that was corrected, but left the same number of letters. Next is the name of the editor, with links out to their profile, talk page, message wall, contributions, and if you're an admin, the option to block that user. If only a number appears, that's a logged out editor. Last is the edit summary, which is a summary of the edits they made. It's good practice to get in the habit of leaving a summary so other editors and yourself can glance over recent changes and see what changes have taken place on the wiki. As you can see, recent changes is very similar to history pages, close with a little more information. That's a lot of information to take in. In my experience as an admin on the My Little Pony wiki, we had people try and vandalize pages all the time. If I knew we were under attack, myself and the other admins would often sit on recent changes and patrol edits to make sure nothing got past us. Recent changes is also useful to look at the latest comments coming through on blog posts or pages. When a new episode recently aired, people often use the comment section to respond to the show and give their own opinions and theories. Now let's chat about logs. As we mentioned, some logs can be shown on recent changes, but you also have the ability to access them on their own. To view them, visit Special Log. Here you'll see a drop-down in which you can view all the recently logged events, or you can filter by a specific log. In this slide, you can see a log of all the options. Let's look, for, let's look at the log for wiki features. By choosing this, we can see who enabled what features and when. This can be a good way to know which admins are enabling which features. For other logs, you can see who recently received rights, got blocked, or changed their avatar, and much more. The logs I use the most are the user rights logs. This is because, as a staff member, sometimes they make users admins or have to remove them. 
When I was an admin, I most often checked the block log to see if there had been any issues while I was away. These logs are a great way to keep up with activity when you're not editing. Now I'll hand the mic back to Sarah. If you have any questions, remember to send them in for the Q&A at the end. Thanks, Charla. And last but not least, another important place to become familiar with is special pages. These can be found at special, special pages and have links to lots of important pages, information, and tools on your wiki. Special pages are broken up into 12 sections, which you can see here. I'm going to focus on pages that we feel are the most important for you to visit from time to time on your wiki. Let's start at the top with the maintenance reports. This section includes a lot of useful links that group together specific types of pages aimed at helping you monitor and improve your wiki. As you can see, these include items that are uncategorized, unused, or contain broken elements. It also contains wanted items as well as listings for the longest, oldest, and other interesting pages. Let's take a look at a few of these, starting with the old pages. By following this link, you are given a list of the oldest pages on the wiki, a link to the page, its history, and how long the page is. Here you can see the oldest pages on Community Central date back to 2006. If you go to an uncategorized link, such as uncategorized photos, you're presented with all the photos that have not been given a category. This can be useful when you're working to clean up your wiki and make sure that everything is accounted for. By visiting uncategorized photos, you can work with the rest of your community to make sure that all photos are given the proper category. Another interesting one to explore is the wanted section. This lists all the items folks have flagged as wanting but don't exist. Here in this slide, you can see the wanted pages from the Game of Thrones wikis. This shows a list of pages that people have created links for but yet don't exist. This list shows the name that was linked and how many times it's been linked to. Looking here, you can quickly find what might be a good next page to start since someone has already marked it as being needed. I find these pages helpful when I visit a wiki and want to try and help out. They create a way for you to easily jump in, help, and create pages that people already want. The next section down is a list of pages, and here you can find links to all pages, all categories, and redirects. Below that is a section dedicated to your user preferences and rights. Here you have quick access to your user preferences, password, and the ability to review your user rights. Another important link here is a users list, which shows you all the users that have edited on your wiki. I use this list all the time to find out who recently edited, as well as who's the admins on the wiki. Next comes recent changes and logs, which you're all very familiar with now. You can also find links to new pages and photos in this section. Right below that is media reports and uploads, which provide links to further details and tools on the media. And by media, we mean photos and videos on your wiki. Below that is the redirecting special pages section, which contains links to special pages such as random page and random wikia. These can be a fun way to discover new content in wikis across the site. The next section down is called High Use Pages and provides you details on what are the most highly used categories, photos, and pages on your wiki. This can be an interesting way to figure out what is the most popular content on your wiki. The last couple of sections are tool sections providing links to create and export pages, contact a Wikia staff member, as well as log in and log out. There's also a link to Wiki features where if you're an admin, you can flip on and off optional or new features. Or if you're not an admin, you can see what's available there and then contact your local admins about them. Whew, that was a lot of tools, but we don't want anyone to get overwhelmed here. These pages are meant to help you maintain as well as explore your Wiki. You don't need to visit each one every single day, but you can use them as inspiration for content drives or as a way to keep up with all the activity that's on your wiki. If you're an admin, maybe work with your admin team and divide up some of the pages and check in on them, say, once a week to see where you might want to focus next or where you feel you need extra eyes. This concludes our tour of the pages, so if anyone has questions, um, please submit them. I don't see any that have come in so far. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's an expert on recent changes out there or page history. Um, one thing I actually thought of while I was doing this is an important thing that you can do is with our custom toolbar, add some of these special pages to it. So I know for me personally, I visit lots of wikis and I always want to know who's editing and, and who's um, 
the admins on the wiki, so I put that user list link in my custom toolbar. So whenever I go anywhere, I can get to that really quickly. Um, Trella, what do you, are any of the pages that you add to your toolbar that we've seen? Um, I mean, recent changes, history, um, user list. I want to see who's editing on the wiki. Mm -hmm. um, that's just really quick way to pull up who's editing, who's an admin, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Dop, how about you? I add the what links here uh, link to my toolbar because when I'm managing pages, I want to know where the incoming links are in case I, I'm going to delete something. I want to be able to make sure that I'm not breaking any links from that side. Okay. That's a good one. The other interesting ones as I was writing this tour is um, some of the wanted uh, links I think are really interesting for, for folks to see. Um, you know, as an admin, sometimes you're kind of curious as to you know, what might be a good next page. We already did all the characters and we did all the episodes. What might else be good? So looking at the wanted pages where people have actually already linked to that um, can be helpful. And then opposite, if there's certain content that you might not want there, but people are linking to it, you can see from the opposite way, okay, where are some links that would maybe need to go and, and clean up because either maybe the name changed or something in that regard. Um, besides that, um, unless anyone else has questions, um, we can wrap up and have a quick webinar. Yay. Last call from the community. Anyone out there? Um, questions on recent changes or logs or history um, or anything like that? Please send them in. If you think of a question after the webinar, you can always contact us via special contact, um, or you can check out our help pages. Um, I'm sure they have the information there that you need, but we always love talking to you. One thing that was useful for me to learn when I was just getting into Wikia was that um, there's two different versions of recent changes. There's enhanced and normal, and the default is enhanced, which means they group the things together. But if you go into special preferences, you can change it so that it will only that it won't display it won't group things together with um, arrows on the side to open and expand so that you can have one line item for every single action on your wiki rather than group recent changes. That's an option you can choose either way. Okay, I actually think that this in go to meeting there are if we look dot in the question section some questions that may have. Oh, God. come through there that popped up that just weren't showing where we usually see them. So Sorry about that, everybody. We were looking in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> in, in ours, um, sorry everyone, mine, it gets super condensed in that area. I don't know why. So first question, Trella, um, how do I navigate to recent changes? Um, special recent changes. Um, what if I want to get there by clicking buttons? Um, well, you can go to special wiki activity. Um, depending on what your navigation is like, usually there's, under on the wiki, there's wiki activity. Uh, so click that, and that takes you to a general overview. And you can click on see all activity, and that will take you directly to special recent changes. Or you can add it to your toolbar as well. So I have that on my custom toolbar as well when, when I feel I need to dig a little deeper. The custom toolbar is awesome. Yes. I think more people need to utilize that. Or we need to make it um, people more aware of it. Mm -hmm. Working on it. <laughs> uh, when will the most visited special page return? So um, some of the special pages, um, I think most visited still is in there, um, but sometimes they only update every 24 hours. So there are times where you'll see there actually is a timestamp at the top of the page that says when it was last updated. Um, so do the way that the sites run, we do something called caching where pages don't always get updated immediately, um, such as special pages. And so usually it's once every 24 hours. Um, and there is a timestamp at the top of the special page that says that. Um, so um, if you happen to see an out of date um, or doesn't seem to be updating, please do let us know. Just send in a message to special contact and we will um, try to kick the servers and make sure that they're returning the right information to you. I think that page might also be having issues as well. Um, we haven't had a lot of stats available this season. Um, and 
that one actually might have some bugs attached to it. So we can look into that more for you. Yeah. Um, okay, this tiny little scroll bar here. I can't see any questions. <laughs> I think the quick question. Quick question. Um, this is off topic, but we can definitely answer it. Can you change the file name of a picture without re-uploading it? You just need to move. I believe so. I think in the yeah. edit menu, you can just rename um, the same way that you would for any um, regular article page. Um, yeah, just like you can move the, the name of a... Um, the name of a page, you can do the same thing with the file. So when you go onto the file page, you can just click the edit drop down and hit rename and um, and get it renamed. And I think that is all the questions, unless anyone else has any last ones. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Um, and joining us on a Friday for the webinar. Um, yeah. This is being recorded, so it will be up on uh, the community.wakia.com uh, early next week, so you can go and watch it there and also find out about upcoming webinars um, and watch past ones. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, we hope to see you on the Community Wiki and across Wakia, and have a wonderful weekend.